I have seen the most disgraceful act of discrimination I can recall in Canada in my life. It was so brazen, so shocking, so public, I'm going to spend most of the show today exposing it. It's all on video. Actually, that's what makes it especially shocking and egregious because the bigots who committed this discrimination knew they were being filmed. In fact, they filmed themselves with your tax dollars. Being filmed didn't make them embarrassed or shy. The opposite. They hammed it up. They played to the cameras. They were boastful about what they were doing. They tried to outdo each other. Now, it wasn't a violent act, a spontaneous act of discrimination. It wasn't a thug kissing, excuse me, kicking someone because he was black. It wasn't a Jew or a Sikh being punched because they were wearing a yarmulke or a turban. It was actually the opposite. Very calm, very official. What Hannah Arendt called the banality of evil. In fact, one of the bigots himself was black. Today, I'm going to show you the video and explain why what you see is even worse than what it looks. And then we're going to do talk to one of Canada's most foremost civil libertarian lawyers about what we can do to fix this bigotry. We're going to talk about a strategy to fight back, to see if we can come up with a plan. And then at the end of the show, we're going to do that plan. We're going to fix this problem. So help me God. This discrimination took place last month in the city of Nanaimo, B.C. I love Nanaimo. It's a city of just over 80,000 people right in the middle of Vancouver Island. I go there an awful lot, probably four times a year. It's great. I mean, anything in B.C. is going to be gorgeous, and anything on Vancouver Island is going to be a touch more relaxed than the mainland. I like the mix of people and folks who've retired there, including a, a lot from Alberta, but also a bit of a hippie granola thing going on there, too, plus old-timers who live and work in the outdoors, people who live off the sea and off the land, and a fair number of aboriginals, too. I suppose it's like any small city, though, a bit more authentic in a way than a big city, a bit more grounded, a bit less pretentious. I love it in Nanaimo, but I'm always on vacation mode out there, so I never really paid attention to the local politics until now, because the bigots I've been talking about, they're Nanaimo City Council, the mayor and the aldermen, all except one who did his best to stop this. Last month, Nanaimo City Council passed a shockingly bigoted motion, a motion to ban Christians who they find, quote, divisive from using publicly funded facilities like the convention center in town. Just days before a Christian convention of sorts was being hosted at that convention center, this city council voted to cancel it. Seriously, they had a debate. Well, debate's the wrong word. It was really a series of shocking rants against Christians that culminated in making Nanaimo's public buildings Christian-free zones. It wasn't a debate because the Christians attacked weren't invited to attend. They weren't even given notice. They weren't told that their contract with the convention center was about to be ripped up. And I think another reason why the Christians weren't invited was that the cowardly bigots on the city council wanted to defame them, to slander them, to insult them, to attack them without their victims being in the room to fight back. I've watched the 20-minute video of this twice, and it makes me sick. I'm going to show you almost the whole thing today, and when I do, I'm sure you'll be just as sickened as me. But just to realize how grotesque, how un-Canadian, how discriminatory, how unacceptable, how illegal this council's conduct was, every time they say the word Christian, I want you to substitute in your mind the word Jew or black or gay. And imagine what the national reaction would be if you saw this sort of vile bigotry against those groups. You don't believe me? Well, I'll show you the videotape in a few moments. But first, let me give you some background. There's a massive annual conference. It's more like a concert, really, based in Atlanta. It's called LeaderCast. It's a leadership event, motivational speakers, talking about how to be better leaders. It's based in Atlanta, but it's simulcast around the world. This year, there was a simulcast event in Cape Town, South Africa, too, and that was anchored by Desmond Tutu, the South African bishop and Nobel Prize winner. In Atlanta, speakers included Laura Bush, the former first lady of the United States, Malcolm Gladwell, the author of pop business books like Tipping Point and Blink, and there were some serious CEOs, too, like Bill McDermott, the CEO of SAP, the multi-billion dollar software company. Last year, they had Jack Welch, the famous CEO formerly of General Electric. This is a business conference, really. There are other motivational speakers each year with a light Christian flavor to them, which isn't surprising given the leadership ethics being taught. But from what I can tell, this whole thing is really like a big Dale Carnegie or Tony Robbins meeting, but with seriously successful people in it, not just people who are famous for being famous. Now, the one-day conference costs 200 bucks to attend in person in Atlanta, and that includes lunch, 
But as I mentioned, it was simulcast around the world, sort of like a pay-per-view sports event. More than 750 locations around the world hosted these simulcasts, some of them in public venues like theaters, some of them in private companies like Motorola. There were viewings across Canada, across BC too, including at BC universities. Here, take a look for a bit just to see what this whole thing looks like. I, I just want to let you know what we're talking about before I get to the shocking bigotry of the Nanaimo City Council. No matter how smart you are, as things become more complex, you need a way to keep your leadership simple. There is power in simplicity. And the more complex your industry is, and the more complex your job is, and the more complex your division department, the demands are, the more important it is for you to find the simplicity. Growth creates complexity, which requires simplicity. You are most productive when you have the room to make a mess. But you need the freedom to have an idea, to make a mistake, to spread it out, to look around. Folks, you are not your work, but your work will run you if you let it. There was a moment of self-doubt. There was a moment when I thought, oh my gosh, it's going to fall apart like Beijing. And I was quickly able to change my focus off of that. And I thought, no way, not today. I'm not going to give in to my fears or into my past memories. I'm going to overcome them. Well, leading in a complex world, uh, more than anything, uh, means recognizing the simple things that you can do to make the circumstances better. Simplicity leads to clarity, to action, to understanding, to better dialogue. All right, that's just a taste of it. It's a bit touchy-feely for me, but it's obviously a world-class event in terms of the speakers and production values. I get why over 100,000 people participated and participate in it every year, either in person or in simulcast. I mean, Jack Welsh, who you saw at the end there, he's almost as famous as Steve Jobs. You saw Condi Rice there. She has amazing experience as a former Secretary of State. This year's speakers were big, too. Now, like any big TV event, this one has sponsors and advertisers. In Nanaimo, it was sponsored by the big local newspaper called the Nanaimo Daily News. They have a lot of other sponsors, too, a dozen or so. And one of the sponsors is a U.S. restaurant chain called Chick-fil-A. They're like McDonald's, but just for fried chicken. They've got a restaurant in Calgary. It's pretty good if you like fried food, and I admit I do. Now, this wasn't a fried chicken conference. It was a leadership conference with A-list celebrities. Chick-fil-A just happened to be an advertiser, which is where this whole thing gets so weird. See, just a few days, just four days before this leader cast convention was about to happen, after a whole bunch of people in Nanaimo had bought tickets, an Nanaimo city councilor brought a motion to city council without notice to anyone. No notice to leader cast, not to the convention center, not even to his fellow councillors. Here, watch Fred Patchy in action. My motion reads that the city of Nanaimo advise the VICC, the Vancouver Island uh, Conference Center, that as owners of the facility, any events that are associated with organizations of people that promote or have a history of divisiveness, homophobia, or other expressions of hate, and as such advise the VICC to not permit the upcoming LeaderCast event to occur in the city-owned facility that is scheduled for Saturday, May the 9th. And I so move. What, you mean the thing with those celebrities, that beautiful thing that that's going to be banned. That was his motion to ban anyone from using the Nanaimo public facilities that are associated with anyone who promotes or maybe once promoted or had a history of divisiveness or an expression of hate. And in specific, to cancel this leader cast convention, the one with Condi Rice that was set to start less than four days from then. Seriously, here, let Patchy try to explain a bit more. Look. Last week, the Nanaimo Daily News had two full-page ads in their publication uh, to promote this event uh, that was uh, sponsored jointly by the Nanaimo Daily News and the Coastal Community Credit Union. And again, uh, there were members in the LGBT community that caught on to that, and I had a phone call from one or two of them on Friday. And we followed up a little bit, and sure enough, you don't have to Google very fast and very far in order to make that connection with Chick-fil-A all over again. Furthermore, uh, in the ad in the Daily News is reference made to one of the speakers, a gentleman by the name of Dr. Henry Cloud, um, who, uh, among other things, he's a psychiatrist who is very strong um, on 
the fact that he believes that um, 